Hi, I'm Keith Giles from the Heritage Cafe Era podcast, and uh, we are here today to talk to our good friend Matt DeStefano about his new book, uh, Heretic, and I'm joined by Jamal and Matt, guys. Introduce yourself. Say hi. It's Jamal. It's really good to be with you guys. And I'm Matt, uh, author of the book with my fellow com- compatriots. Is that the right word? Compadres. 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 Sure. Yeah. So happy to be down here. Yeah. Colleagues. Colleagues. Fellow colleagues. Friends, Romans, countrymen. Yes. <laughs> so, Matt, tell us about this book, Heretic. What led you to write this book? Uh, well, I got super baked one day, and then the Holy Spirit told me what to say, and I wrote it in there. Wow. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're led by the Holy Spirit. I, well, I, I, I'd like to think I was. Is this an um, inspired book? Yeah, sure. If, yeah. Loosely. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I, you know, when you you come out of the evangelical church and then you, you change your views in any sort of way, you're going to be faced with all these questions. And so over the years of writing and blogging and, you know, this is my fourth book. We've been doing the podcast now, like, what, 15, 16 episodes. You're going to come up with all these, come up against all these questions, mm-hmm. right? And it seems that there's like a handful of them that are all pretty much the same. Um, You know, the first one I always hear, because I'm a universalist, I'm an unabashed universalist, whatever. I might be wrong. I think I'm right, but don't we all? Um, If everyone's going to heaven, if everyone's saved, why follow Jesus? And I've been, I've seen that question in in so many forms, so many times. So I was like, I'm going to start with that. You know, what, what is the point of following Jesus? If if I fear I feel like my salvation is assured in Christ, and it's like I'm gonna address that question because it just seems like this visceral emotional response. That's what seems to be behind that question. So I you know I tackle that question. I tackle a bunch of other questions that I've seen: LGBT question, inerrancy of the Bible or lack thereof, um, penal substitution atonement theory. You know the common atonement theory in the West. Yeah. Um, End times, the rapture, which we're going to be, you know, we got a podcast coming out that's yeah. going to be on that. We're recording tomorrow. I'm really excited about it, but I want to tackle that because other than hell, like that was the big one for me. The rapture was the second big one. Like that scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. Like if I didn't know where my parents were, like I expected to find a pile of clothes in the corner, <laughs> like, oh shoot, poof, they're gone. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I, I, I go, you know, I don't go after that. I, I address that. Um, uh, common evangelical belief. I don't know how common it is, broadly speaking, but in my tradition, it was like orthodoxy, <laughs> you know? So that I try to tackle those questions. Ten, there's 10 of them in the book. Um, and I try to make it lighthearted, you know, I cuss from time to time because that's who I am. You do cuss sometimes? Sometimes, really? as you guys might know. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Funny. That, that's what led me to write the book. Um, it's 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 a you know very forthright book. I don't I don't I if I suffer from anything it's brevity. I try to, I try to make things succinct and short, and I don't try to um, say too much. But I want to you know make a strong case for why I believe what I believe. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. So when you think about a reader like someone picking up the book and reading it. What, what's your heart? Like, what do you want them to walk away with? Like, when they're done reading the book, what do you hope that they... What's their takeaway? What do you want to impart to the reader, to somebody who, who reads this book? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I, if, if, the, if there's a sincere heart behind the questions that lead to the answers, then those are the folks I want to talk to. So if you're really like, yeah, what, what would be the point in following Jesus if we're not saved from eternal torment? If that's a legit question for me, I want to, I want to speak to you and, and say this is my understanding of things. Um, and I want people to, what I want them to take away is, if you're, if you're gonna, if you go down the road of deconstructing your faith, you don't have to chuck it all out. And I want people to say, yeah, the rapture never made any sense. Right. But I don't want it to be like, oh, if that goes away, out goes the whole thing. Or inerrancy, you know, if the Bible's not inerrant, well, I got to throw out the whole thing because what can I trust? I want people to go, okay, I can lose that and still hold on to my faith. And not only is that, I think, true for a lot of people, I think it's more healthy. I think when we have a, an unhealthy view of the Bible, we... we can lead unhealthy lives at least for me like that was my experience like 
my cert my my certain uh, theory of inspiration was inerrancy growing sure. up, and I felt like that led to an unhealthy faith where. Once that house, once that corner card goes out, the whole house yeah, comes down, out. right? Mm -hmm. And I want people to go, okay, if I lose that, that's not the corner anymore. I can lose that. And the house still stands. The house still stands because, yeah. because it's not built on the foundation of a lie, which is what I think inerrancy is. Right. Or penal substitution atonement theory. Sure. You know, we've often heard that the gospel is that atonement theory. And I'm like, crap, like that... If we question that too much, I think then it, we lose it, and then we lose the whole gospel. And, I'm, and I, what I want to say is that I think there's a healthier view of atonement that's not, sh you know, just tied up in this lawyer talk, which comes from Calvin, so not surprising. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but you can, you can you can push that aside and say, oh, I'm not, and, and your faith is still okay. The gospel's still the gospel. So you know, so that you know, I want people to get that from the book that. You know, it's okay to question these things, and what we were commonly told may not stand up, and that's okay. Yeah. You know, it's okay for those things to go aside because they're really, right. at the end of the day, they're really not helping us very much, I don't uh, think. No, that's just really good. I wanted to ask you about this because this is, this is actually really funny for me. But um, most books have, like, endorsements. You know, like, right. your book is a little different in that. It is. That it has, like... <laughs> I mean, can I just kind of read? Let me please, just, like, yeah, please. Really, please. On the front it. cover of the book, it says, "This is a perfect cocktail of disgusting lies." <laughs> and this is a quote from an anonymous source. Yes, it is. And then, like you know, on the back, a real quote. A real quote. Yeah. yeah, we are no, we are no match for this professor of word vomit, <laughs> who, in all reality, <laughs> is getting ninety percent of his info from Wikipedia or a bitter Not rabbi enough. who has no reason to re revere scripture as holy. Now, these are just some examples. Yeah. So, okay, these these are like, obviously pretty severe accusations that have come against you. And you decided to put these quotes on the book, which I find really interesting. So are you saying that the questions, there's 10 questions in the book that mm -hmm. you address. So these 10 questions, are you saying that you're not really addressing, you're not trying to like entertain the accusers here. You're actually using that, these quotes basically, but you're turning around and saying, okay, there are people who may actually have these, these questions as legitimate. They're not accusations. So you want to speak to people who have legitimate questions, right? As opposed to just want to accuse you of things. Yeah, I don't I don't engage. I mean, we're all on Facebook. We, you know, we all do our thing on there. I try not to engage. The, I mean, the people who are saying this stuff, who have put it either on my Patheos blog um, or on Facebook in some way. I, you know, I don't talk to those people. I think it's hilarious that you yeah. put those on the boat. Though. Well, I, 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 I'm a big Red Sox fan. And in 2004, <laughs> when they finally won the fucking World Series, um, they called themselves the Idiots. And they had, like, long hair, shaggy beards, you know, like their jerseys were unkempt. They were the opposite of how, like, the New York Yankees ran, ran things. And I just... And, and there's... Um, I think in the Sufi tradition, they, there's a book I have. It's The Wisdom of the Idiots. And they kind of take on this moniker of, okay, if you want to call me a heretic, you want to say all these things. The, from like a stand-up comedy standpoint, like the joke is to make this joke. Like, and I'm not a stand-up comedian, but that's the spirit of it. Like, make the joke because it, it kind of shows like you can say these things and I'm just, it's not going to really affect me. But I do want to talk to people that have the sincere questions because... I had those questions too when when rapture fell apart for me or, or inerrancy or eternal torment I for a short time became an atheist because I was like well this is the only God I knew that God concept is now gone ergo no God and so yeah I, I do want to talk to the people who aren't attaching the questions to these silly quotes um, I just thought the quotes were silly and funny and if I saw a book that said that I'd be like I I would have to buy it. <laughs> and, but it, I think it, it kind of just says, okay, say what you want about me. I'm just going to make a joke out of it. And now here's some meat that, that actually goes behind that. Because I'm not, it's not a perfect copy of Disgusting Lies. It's, I mean, when someone says this is a lie, I mean, it kind of assumes the worst in someone. Right. I'm not trying to lie. This is my sincerely held beliefs. Yeah. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Sure. But I'm not trying to deceive anyone. As you guys all know, we're not yeah, trying to deceive yeah, anyone. These are our thoughts. And here's the here's the great thing. If I look at my first book, All Set Free, and you guys have probably had this experience, and we are just talking about it at dinner, and then I look at this book, I'll look back and say, oh, I don't think I agree with that. 
Mm -hmm. And that's the, the beauty and kind of the, um, the curse of being an author, right? You put out your thoughts and you're basically chronicling your life. Mm -hmm. And then you look back and you're like, oh, shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. know if I yeah. hear that anymore. And so you kind of have to just take that risk and say, in 10 years, I'll probably disagree with some mm -hmm. things in this book. And that's okay. Yeah. 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 And that's the difference, I think, between like the kinds of people that are saying these things about you uh, and have said things about you in on, on your blog and on social media, and, and I think Jamal and I have experienced this as well. Uh, these are the people pushing back against you are doing it because they're not the kind of people whose ideas have changed over the years. Like they're not thinking about it and questioning and poking and looking at it from a different angle and willing to ask these kind of questions. Uh, you're, you're not wired that way. You're wired to be someone who's constantly questioning and, and looking at it and studying and thinking and rethinking, right? And, uh, and, and I think that's actually a good thing. And so by you writing this book, and I think even by mocking and making fun of these kind of reactions, you're giving other people who have similar thoughts permission to, to go with, to kind of follow your lead. Right. Yeah. So they, because their pastors are going to call them heretics. Their their uh, their parents are going to call them, you know, uh, you know, whatever all kinds of names. How dare you doubt these things? These that are true, you know. And so I think that's great that you're willing to do that. Uh, is that your hope? I mean, are you hoping to kind of speak to people uh, who are having some of these same same kind of questions and and they're not sure it's okay to have these thoughts? I mean. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, yeah. I would want the people who are having these. You know, I when we look at our own faith, I think before we can move past some things that maybe we were just handed, mm -hmm. I think we have to take the first step. And so, yeah, if you've taken that first step of saying, I'm not certain that doctrine A, B, C is true, then yeah, I, I want you to come along in this journey and say that, yeah. If you're not willing to take that step, I don't think anything we're saying is ever going to resonate yeah. with anyone. That's right. And that's been my experience. It's probably been yes. your fear, guys. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's, if you've had these questions, if you've had questions about penal substance, and all of us have, if we're honest, come on, let's, let's be real, and inerrancy. Mm -hmm. I mean, we look at these, we call them contradictions, and, you know, the way we look at the Bible, like, we talked to Peter Enns, and I loved how he said, you know, it's not necessarily a contradiction if two people disagree. Right. And if that's the Bible, then we can't really call them contradictions, but when we look at them, like, Bible, author, God. Yes. Then it's a contradiction. <laughs> That's a contradiction, right? Because right. <laughs> right. the presupposition is that it all says the same thing. That's right. right. And it all came from one voice with one idea, one goal. In right. Mind. Right. And I think the moment we're intellectually honest, we actually see those. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and and unless we're intellectually honest, we won't see them. Right. I mean, so yeah, the people who have looked at it and said, "Yeah, what do I do with that? What do I do with a depiction of God?" that seems to suggest he's untrustworthy and he's very, very violent. We're doing that. Um, well, I, I, I have a way of interpreting the scriptures that we will probably all sort of are kind of on that same page. And a lot of people, I'm not saying anything. Honestly, I'm not saying anything new in this book. I'm saying it in a new way, maybe, because I, I cuss and I'm snarky <laughs> and sarcastic and... I haven't seen a I haven't seen a cover quite like this. Yeah. <laughs> and that is why there is a parental advisor. There is. Yes, and it's not just there, it's not just there because I mean It's not a joke, by the way. Yes, no, parents, don't don't let little Johnny No, read this before you read it to yeah, your exactly. kids. Please. Like. Right. So something else you're doing that I think is really great is uh, the first month that your book is out on Amazon. Yes, Explain on Amazon. what is going on here. Well one of my interlocutors, and I can't remember who it was, on Facebook or Pathios, um, said something to the effect of like I hope you don't get paid for this and so I thought and and our publisher uh, uh, choir and Ralph hey why don't you not get paid <laughs> so right. I just thought like okay yeah bring it it's like, a brilliant idea I'm not it's gonna get paid the royalties are gonna be donated to a charity awesome. and we're kicking around some ideas uh, choir publishing and myself we're gonna come up with who we're gonna um, donate those proceeds to and um, I don't remember who's on the list, but all the charities looked amazing. Yeah. So we did a little more research and picked one. And so the first, yeah, it's gonna the, the book's gonna be out April first. That whole month, royalties are going royalties from the um, you know the, the the hard copy here are going to a charity, so that I can say no, I don't make money from this. <laughs> At least in the first month. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Well, thank you for uh, taking it. I know it's a lot of work to write a book. And I appreciate you 
uh, taking the time to write it, and I know it's not easy having those, even though, obviously, kind of having fun with some of the accusations. It's not fun to get those thrown your way. No. So I appreciate no. you, uh, your courage and pushing through that and writing the book. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Yeah.